Thank you, Ashley. And as Ashley mentioned, any questions you guys have can be entered here in the chat panel uh, on the GoToWebinar toolbar. But Kevin and I are happy to be here with you guys today and to kind of discuss some of the what's new features in Inventor 2021. As we get started, I have a cheat sheet here showing the three most recent releases of Inventor. Uh, kind of the highlights of what's new with each release, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. So depending on which release you're coming from, you may have missed a few of these updates or may not have found them yet, but we always like to share those as we're getting started. So 2020, or see 2018, we had some iLogic enhancements, uh, model-based definition enhancements to support for assemblies in 3D PDFs, uh, exporting to 3D PDFs from the Inventor model, to uh, share 3D PDFs uh, outside of engineering. 2019 uh, had the new whole panel instead of the traditional dialog box. The whole command was moved to a panel UI. 2020, we had some more of the standard part modeling features moved over to the panel UIs. And 2021, we have some more of those moving over. We have a measure command update for drawing, some AnyCAD updates to support Revit models, uh, multi-solid window selection if you're working with multi-body multi -body, uh, part models. The dark theme is back inside of Inventor 2021, if you were missing that from Inventor 2020. And a few more exciting updates we're gonna take a look at today. The 2021 focus is a, around experience, automation, and insight. And this is moving forward the direction that Autodesk has been taking with Inventor for the past few releases. Inventor 2020, uh, on the experience side, brought the light theme. It was a refreshed UI uh, throughout the software. It was overwhelmingly accepted, but the one request users had was the ability to change it to a dark theme. So they didn't want to be pushed with only one theme. They wanted to have a choice. So Autodesk went to work and they brought back a dark blue theme. It is in a pre-release state, so they're still working on it, but it is supported, it is available inside the software, and we'll take a look at that today as well. They wanted to give the users that consistent look and feel between AutoCAD and Inventor. So if you like the dark background, the dark theme, you can add that back with Inventor 2021. It was there in 2016, 17, 18, 19. They just removed it in 2020, but they have added it back. Performance has been an area of focus uh, inside of Inventor for the past few releases. The faster we make Inventor, the more users push it to its limits. We're consistently seeing large assemblies, uh, plant layouts, factory layouts, um, large assembly models that get in the essence of 400,000 unique components with over a million occurrences in those assemblies. And so as computers get stronger, Inventor gets stronger, the users are pushing it to its limits. So using the express mode and updating there, uh, only refreshing graphics instead of sketches in the background when we're panning and zooming. So those types of perform performance enhancements are happening in the background, making Inventor react faster, update faster, drawing views update faster, model refresh faster when zooming and panning around. So a lot of that in the background that we don't really see on the highlight sheet, but is making Inventor launch faster, open faster, save faster, place drawings faster. The automation side, it's not just programming and customizing, it's the flexibility and capabilities to leverage repetitive tasks. So moving from the dialog boxes over to the UI panels, streamlining those workflows, kind of reducing the mouse clicks up to 30%, making us complete those tasks faster and execute commands faster, build models faster, getting us out the door into production faster. On the insight, this is kind of the idea station. This is what we want Inventor to do, what we want to see in the future, our user requests that are being uh, accessed and added to the software via updates or via new releases. So this is an early area of investment, uh, leveraging data and product analytics throughout the development process. Um, but it's more than that. It's allowing the commands to work faster, to work smarter, being able to set presets inside the extrude, the revolve, the whole command, so we can save those kind of favorites there as we get going. So where do we access Inventor 2021? Well, there's two ways to access it. One is via the Autodesk desktop app. 
uh, that is locally installed on the machine. The second is via the Autodesk Accounts web page, uh, and you can access any release, not just Inventor 2021 this way, but any of the uh, Autodesk softwares that you're assigned are available via the desktop app and the Autodesk Accounts page. So 2021, what we're going to take a look at today, uh, broken out into four areas, uh, general enhancements, drawing assembly, and part enhancements that we're going to take a look at. So on the general enhancement side, we've got some new UI panels, more and more of the dialog boxes going away and moving over to the panel architecture, uh, displaying extended information, making it easier to turn that feature on, some save enhancements, uh, some AnyCAD updates, tolerance analysis, uh, capabilities and accessibility for using that, and then the dark theme that everyone wanted to see back. So the dark theme is back. We'll start right there. Uh, in the part modeling environment, uh, we've got that dark blue uh, interface. It's the same as in the drawing side, as well as in assemblies and in presentation modes. You just have to turn it on. By default, the light theme is the present theme when you launch uh, Inventor 2021 but we can access this via the application options on the colors tab, and then there's a UI theme pull down. Just select the dark pre-release. Uh, when you select pre-release, you're gonna see one more dialog box that pops up that says continue, cancel, or details. And the details will launch the Autodesk uh, white paper page on the dark theme, indicating what they're doing with it, why it's the dark blue background uh, for support for 4K monitors and so forth and that it is in a pre-release state because they're not finished with it yet. Uh, hopefully in a future update or hopefully in 2022, uh, it'll be finalized and it'll no longer say pre-release and it'll just be part of the software there. One thing while I've got this screenshot up, um, you guys can customize your schemes. If you know that already, that's great. The uh, color scheme editor used to be part of an SDK tool that was loaded in the background after install, but it is now part of the software. And if you want to change the sketch lines, instead of being blue, you want them gray. Or instead of green, you want construction lines to be orange. Uh, you can go in and customize schemes and make those changes. It is supported by the software, and it happens as soon as you hit apply. So in 2019, the whole command uh, moved from the dialog box over to the UI panel. And this was received with various feedback. Some users liked it, some users didn't like it, but the one thing users could agree on was the fact that you could go between the sketch and the whole feature edits seamless. You didn't have to exit the feature and go back and find the sketch and edit the sketch. You could just toggle between the two right here. Inventor 2020 brought us the extrude command, the revolve command, the sweep command, and the thread command moving over to the UI panels. And in the extrude and the revolve, we can seamlessly go between the sketch and the extrusion, uh, making edits if we want to without leaving the command, uh, just going right back and changing the dimension on the sketch or modifying the geometry on the sketch, and then clicking right back over to the feature itself and executing the extrusion or revolve. The sweep and the thread uh, commands added to that UI panel also have presets. And so these are like our personal favorites. So if we're using a command a lot, and we have it set up, especially on the thread side. If you're adding threads, a specific uh, type and size, just add it as a preset, give it a name. The next time you launch the command, you can select it from the pull down right there and all the information is populated out. You just select where you're gonna apply the thread and keep moving. So in Inventor 2021, these UI panels have been updated. So these commands have moved from the traditional dialog boxes over to the new panel architecture. And those include the bin, the coil, the decal, delete phase, split, thicken, uh, combine, and copy object. These are supported in both the light and the dark theme. The coil command also has uh, presets that you can add, so you can quickly get back to those. The uh, combine and the copy object, light theme, dark theme supported. Uh, as we the software grows more and more of the commands, uh, especially the fillet, the chamfer, and the loft that require extra picks and clicks and algorithms in the background. Uh, those are being rolled in in later releases or updates, so they haven't made it there yet. But as we're getting more and more into these uh, panel architectures, it's top to bottom workflows, uh, selecting 
what we're going to work with, what we're cutting it against or splitting it against or what we're combining with. Uh, are we joining? Are we cutting? Are we making an intersection of these? Is it a solid? Is it a surface? So we've got all these different options here. Uh, the decal command, the delete face, um, automatic face chain, wrapping to faces. Uh, there's advanced tabs in some of these boxes that used to be on the more tab uh, in the dialog boxes. So all the information is there. It's just instead of that pick and choose workflow from the old traditional dialog boxes, it's now that top to bottom workflow inside these UI panels. Uh, the split command, uh, same thing here. What are we splitting? Is it a face? Is it a solid? Are we doing all faces? Light theme, dark theme supported, thicken command as well. Are we going inside or outside our directions here? Uh, the faces, automatic face chain. If we've got multiple faces, what type, what tolerance? So all of the commands or the uh, features that were available in the dialog boxes, they're now there inside the UI panels as well. So the frame generator also got some love in this release and that these commands have moved over to that panel architecture as well. So the insert frame, the change, the corner joint, trim extended face, uh, frame member info, reuse and change reuse, light theme and dark theme as well. Now inside the frame generator uh, environment on these, uh, most of these new uh, UI panels, there's also some new zooming commands. So these are sweet because you can zoom directly to the member you've got selected or the geometry edge you've got selected. The orientation uh, that used to be part of the dialog box for inserting frames is now at the feature selection. So you've got a little triad on screen to where you can select the orientation. Is it top corner? Is it center? Is it inside uh, going out? The offset commands, uh, offset direction A and B that you're using, there's triads on screen that you can drag the manipulators across so you can do the update there on screen versus in the uh, UI panel if you would like. But these are supported for the uh, light theme and dark theme as well. And then we get into the corner joints. Um, and because they're not just replacing the light theme with the dark theme, when they start adjusting the, the difference between those two themes, a lot of the previews change colors. So in the corner joint here, it's a good example, the lighter yellow and the lighter blue, but then if you're using the darker theme, it's more of an orange and a darker blue. And so they have to adjust these uh, as we change the themes. So that's one more reason the dark theme is still in a pre-release state. It's not finalized yet. They're still working on it. Uh, but here on the reuse command, uh, we've got these new zoom. We can zoom in, we can zoom out directly to the member. When we execute the uh, command, it zooms back out to the orientation we had it there beforehand. So the trim extend, same thing, um, the light theme, the dark theme, the change reuse uh, has our new zoom commands. Uh, we can set up presets for these commands as well. So if we've got favorites that we're using, uh, wanna, you know, we're gonna change out. Maybe we're changing a, a frame from four by four tube to two by two tube, or if we're going from a rectangular to a square. And we've got a preset that we use a lot Hit that little pull down, select our two by two, select our members we're going to swap out, keep it rolling. So the frame member info uh, was added to the new panel architecture as well. And that is when we're going in and selecting any of our members or multiple members. Uh, we want to see the information there, kind of the eye properties in a table view here. We have that ability. Now, the displaying extended information. This has been in the software for a few releases, but it's been kind of hidden. Uh, it's kind of in the hamburger menu here in the model browser, and then under display preferences and show extended names. Well, they've added that access to the application options on the part tab, display extended information after feature node name in browser. And what that does is that takes our model browser from just listing out our feature names to giving us more intelligent information out here to the side. So instead of just saying that this is hole one, well, it's a 5.4 millimeter diameter and it's going to a specific depth. Our circular pattern, here's what we're patterning. It's 360 degrees. And 2021 has added uh, support for work features and the mirror command. So our work plane is offset from the XY plane at 103.153 millimeters. And our mirror is a solid 
that we're joining and mirroring around a face. And so those being added to support, extended information being easily accessible, it's still there in the little hamburger menu, the three horizontal bars in the model browser, but it's also available in the application options. Any CAD updates for this release have been added to include support for Revit data. So if you're receiving Revit project files, the .rvt files, we can place those directly into Inventor assemblies using the AnyCAD functionality. If you receive an updated version of that file, save over it. Or if you're working in a house that has uh, architectural uh, softwares in place via the Revit structure, Revit, arch uh, Revit architecture, or Revit MEP, and they're saving the, the RVT files into the Windows folder, if it's updated and you've got a reference to it, you can hit the update command inside of Inventor and it automatically updates these uh, models and we're seeing live reference uh, updates there from the Revit side. An iLogic enhancement was added this release to include the ability to capture DWG or IDW geometry. So if you right click on a edge, fillet, line, uh, inside of a DWG file or an IDW file or any of your 2D files and you can select iLogic and then capture current state and then the code is pulled based off of the geometry that you've got selected. Then you can, if you're running internal or external rules there, you can pull right from that, from the view that it's in uh, to update it and so forth and capture that information. Some save enhancements for this release. There is a new option to save files that are in library folders. So if you have write access uh, to those files, you can save those now. Where in the past, uh, anything saved in a library folder would not be automatically saved because it was read-only. But if you have access to that as a user, we can save those there. We've also got the traditional prompt to save uh, has been replaced with the save state uh, naming here. And it's giving us a little more information in this dialog box. And in this case here, I'm saving for manual updates and mass property update. Another file is saving because of an API change in the background. There is a migration option. Do you want it to prompt us to save? Yes. The default is don't save unless I tell it to save. You can toggle that off to where it always saves. You can have it set to do not prompt me and always save. So it migrates those files without the additional, uh, are you sure you want to do this box? so that it's migrated forward and older releases can't update it. So you can turn that on, you can turn that off, um, but in the application options on the save tab, we do have some new save options in here. So API changes are updated, user uh, edits are updated, manual updates are added, file resolution change, if we're zooming in, zooming out, do we want it to prompt us for that? Do we want it to save yes or no? We've got some options there for those. Tolerance analysis. If you are utilizing the tolerance analysis subscription benefit tool, accessibility is now easier. So instead of only being on the environments tab, it has been added to the inspect, design, and annotate tab inside the interface. If you do not have tolerance analysis installed, you will see an icon like this right here with the download icon on top of it that is saying you should download it and install it. Configuration 360 is no longer part of the default install. It is now available as a separate download from the Autodesk App Store. Uh, Inventor 2020 and older releases, uh, Configurator 360 was part of the default install. It's just now moved off to the web uh, as an available add-in from the Autodesk App Store. What was introduced as part of the Light Theme in Inventor 2020 as Light Theme IBL and the light theme non-IBL based uh, environments or lighting styles, those have been renamed uh, for this release. So if you are coming from Inventor 2020 up to 2021 and you were doing some rendering or setting up some animations with lights um, inside Inventor Studio, those two environments have changed names. We had some spreadsheet enhancements for this release and that is a local install of Microsoft Excel is no longer required when you're reading or exporting data. It's still required if you're gonna create and edit spreadsheets, uh, I parts, I assemblies and so forth via right click edit spreadsheet, you still have to have a local uh, Microsoft Excel copy installed. But if you're just reading that data in, if you're receiving it from a client, from a vendor, or you've downloaded it from a, a, a vendor somewhere, 
you don't have to have it if you're just reading that data, but if you are going to make edits, it is still required. Um, being that you don't have to have a local install of Excel to read that data, meaning it doesn't have to launch Excel in the background, we are seeing uh, speed improvements uh, as far as the operations getting faster because it's not having to launch Excel in the background if it's not already loaded. Now, I think in Inventor 2018.2, we had these highlight new badges added, and they would show us everything that was added in 2018, 2018.1, 2018.2, 2018.3, and then the 2019 updates. Well, in 2021, it's only showing the major release, and it's only showing one at a time. And so on the Get Started tab, under Highlight New, uh, you can toggle this on, toggle this off. If you don't like seeing the little orange nodes telling us something is new there, um, you can have the auto hide where they go away after you use one of those commands that had something new uh, as far as feature or enhancement involved. But you can go between the three most recent releases. So you can toggle it to see what was new in 2019, 2018, or 2020. Just single toggle those on by single uh, releases and the little orange nodes display there, or you can turn those off completely if you don't like them. So some assembly updates, which would not be available in Inventor LT, um, but some performance and production uh, enhancements kind of in the background around express mode, uh, opening, closing, suppressing components faster, uh, design views, uh, up, updating, whether it's model-based definitions we're working with, part design views, assembly design views, model browser uh, for non-visible components. So if we've got visibility turned off on components, it's not loading those in the background as we're opening files, meaning they're opening faster. And then they will only open in the background as they are uh, toggled back on for visibility. The constraint and joint command, uh, previews working faster, uh, turning components on and off. Visibility-wise, uh, if you're going through design view reps or level of details or just turning on or off visibility, getting faster there as well. The translator side, we now support, or Inventor 2021 now supports Solid Edge and SolidWorks version 2020, uh, Unigraphics 1872 series on the AnyCAD side, same thing. Solid Edge and SolidWorks 2020 files can be imported as AnyCAD references as well as the Unigraphics 1872 series. Some general part enhancements here. Uh, we've looked at the UI panels already and the display extended information, but 3D annotation support uh, for styles, the unwrap command, getting an enhancement. The unwrap command was new for Inventor 2020. Uh, Multi-solid parts, uh, filtering added, and flange angle by reference for sheet metal files. So we'll start here with the multi-solid parts. Um, and if you're using the filter selection to select bodies or select face and edges, now, as you're dragging a window around your components in the part modeling uh, window, it will select those bodies or those faces and edges, depending on what your filter is selected for. So, but it does support the selection of multiple solid bodies. So you just select, set the uh, selection filter for what you're looking for. And then as you go right to left, it grabs everything. Left to right, it grabs whole entities. Just as it always does, we just now have an additional filter there. The unwrap command that was added with Inventor 2020 gave us the ability to see a flat pattern of any component, not just of a sheet metal file, but it just unwraps any component into a flattened state there. We now can rename that unwrap feature if we want to give it a specific name. We can now align it to the model or any of the origin planes right here inside the dialog box. So the X, Y, the X, Z, or the Y, Z plane, as well as aligned to the model itself. And any of the holes we can select multiple holes to be rigid that are there so that they're not moving around uh, in our unwrap feature. So the 3D annotation uh, support now for custom properties. So if we are adding custom properties to our model, uh, when we are applying uh, leaders, notes, or profile notes uh, using the uh, 3D annotation tools, we can now retrieve those custom models or custom model properties there. The sheet metal flange command now supports the ability to reference a flange by an existing angle or existing edge or existing face. 
so a planar surface, an origin plane, or work plane, or any planar face, we can go out and set this by reference and then select the uh, reference angle or face that we want to use, or we can use the traditional by value and type in the angle that we want it to uh, uh, abide by. Some assembly enhancements. Bolted connection, disabling, enabling the sub-assembly creation of bolts, tube and pipe, frame analysis, uh, mirror and copy naming schemes, some express mode enhancements. Uh, we took a look at the frame generator UI panels earlier. But the bolt, bolted connection now has the ability to disable or enable the sub-assembly structure creation. So previous releases, Inventor 2020 and older, uh, bolted connections were treated as a sub-assembly. Well, now we can disable that option and those bolted connections, the bolt, the washer, the nut, whatever it is, is now treated as a top level component instead of a traditional sub-assembly component. That is available inside the bolted connection generator dialog box in the upper right hand corner. Just enable or disable that. In the application options on the file tab, down in the lower left under the file naming defaults, the tube and pipe uh, environment has an option now where we can go in and we can set our bomb structure for our top level run, for our sub level runs, for our routes. So if we want it to include an assembly name or an item number or an index number in the file name itself, we can adjust those. If we want to set our top level run to be normal, or reference or phantom, we can do that right here. By default, that's where they're gonna be. We can still change that at the bill of material level later. This is just what it's gonna do for all of the defaults as we're going. But our assembly runs and our hose runs, whatever we're adding, we can add a specific unique number, an index number, a date, be a day, month, or year, project name, it's pulling from the I properties. If we wanna add a specific project number or project name to any of our uh, naming schemes here, we can do that. And then the lovely button called reset. So if you add any of these and you decide you don't like them or you don't remember what it looked like by default, the reset option will reset it to the out of the box state. Uh, we also have the same thing on the mirror and copy side. And this allows us to add information into our file naming uh, nomenclature here for what is mirrored or what is copied. Do we wanna add the assembly name? the file name plus the assembly name underscore MIR, or just the file name as it is, or do we wanna put the project name, or do we wanna take out the file name and just put in a specific uh, assembly name underscore MIR. We can adjust any of those. Again, we can reset it. But as we hit okay, nothing else is needed. The next time we start a mirror copy, it will adhere to those new naming defaults, or we can come back in here and reset this back as well. The frame analysis solver now has a new set of rules, uh, automatic. It'll choose based off of the default criteria that you've applied uh, inside your frame analysis, or you can set it to use the skyline or the sparse ahead of time, or the frontal or the multi-threaded, uh, depending on what analysis you are running. Those objects, those uh, options are still there. The automatic will do what it's always done. It'll go based off the user input, or if you know specifically what you're looking for, uh, you can go ahead and default that on the solver tab before you run your analysis. And on the express mode for assemblies, uh, it now supports switching out iAssembly members. So if we, we are using iAssemblies and we've got express mode turned on, um, we need to switch out a table member. We can do that via the iAssemblies there. Frame generator trim extend to face command now supports trimming members to a curved face. The cuts at the end of the member are square. They are not contoured to match the curved face. They are cut square, but it does support trimming to those curved faces. On the drawing side, drawing sheet formats and new drawing creation, uh, making it easier to create 2D drawings. Uh, dimension type displays, automated center line accessibility, uh, drawing styles, the measure command has been added to the drawing environment so we don't have to add useless dimensions or start the dimension command just to see how long something is. We've got a measure command inside the drawing environment now. As we start new drawings with Inventor 2021, if you're using the new file dialog box 
and you select your DWG file or IDW file, and that template has sheet sets set up inside of it, so our sheet formats, you can go ahead and pick one of those sheet formats from the new dialog box, and then go ahead and start that drawing a little bit faster. So if we select that view with five views plus an isometric, or four views plus an isometric there, and then we tell it the file we're gonna use, it automatically creates those views for us. Now, you can create your own sheet formats, save them into your templates, and then they're available as well but you can utilize the ones that are in the default out of the box templates as well. Now, you don't have to only use the create new file dialog box. You can also use the application menu, uh, the file application or the file tab, the new, the drawing, and then your sheet formats are listed right here as well. So you can grab one of those and start the drawing uh, view, view creation a little bit faster. Aligning dimensions, to a specific reference is now supported. So if you're selecting points or lines and they're not linear and you want them to align to a specific reference, um, in the past you can do this. Sometimes you have to place it and then drag it off at that reference. Well, now you can just right click, uh, select dimension and rotate it and then give it a reference and that dimension will rotate based off that uh, reference and be perpendicular there. And so it will place that for you. A new parallel diameter uh, is added with a diameter symbol anytime you select a shaft or a hole uh, inside of a 2D environment. It's going to throw that uh, diameter symbol in front of your dimension there for you by default. The automated center lines option has been available via a right click on a drawing view in the past. And now with Inventor 2021 on the annotate tab on the symbols panel, you can select automate center lines and then select the view and then set your uh, preferences. What are you applying it to? Is it side projection, front projection? Uh, if we're doing fillets, what's our min and max that we wanna work with? What kind of precision here? And then select okay, and it automates those center lines for you. Drawing style now supports uh, edges as reference and edges as parts with shaded uh, views. So if we are creating our reference file, uh, detail views, projected views, section views, and we've got shaded turned on, uh, we can go into the view itself, go to the model state tab, and turn on the shaded uh, for reference or part for those uh, reference components. And then the measure command. M on the keyboard, right click, select measure, tools command, select measure off the measure panel. And now you can measure components inside of a DWG file without having to start the dimension command and adding dimensions that you may or may not need later on right there. So let's jump over to the software, take a look at some of these new features. So what we're gonna look at here is the decal command. Um, being moved from, from the traditional dialog box over to the new UI panel. Um, one thing of note here on my screen is all of the little orange nodes here. That is because I have the highlight new turned on for the 2020 release. So it's gonna show me everything with an orange node there coming from 2020 as to what's new in this release here. So I'm gonna come over and I see my deca decal command here has been moved from the dialog box to the panel UI. This is dockable. So you can dock this right here by your model browser. You can move this to the other side of the screen if you want to dock it on the side. Some Vault users like to put their Vault browser on one side of the screen, so you can dock this, or you can leave it floating, and it will remember where it was at the next time you open the command. But I have a PNG file here, so this file supports transparency. So instead of having a white background around my image, I've just got my Hagerman H with my arrow here. And so I've got my image selected in the decal command. I want to apply it to this face, I'm gonna wrap it to this face and select okay. And then it takes and supports the transparency there and then wraps the image right around to my component here on my piston cap. Now, on the assembly side, loading components faster. Uh, this component, this assembly here, this jet assembly model, uh, you know, loads inside of 20 seconds, uh, coming in 860 components in here. Uh, pulling in very quickly inside of Inventor 2021, uh, opening this in Inventor 2020, 
didn't take too much longer, about 25 to 30 seconds, depending on uh, other files that I had going or not at the same time. So in Vendor 2021 is getting faster. It is working uh, with large assemblies better. The enhanced uh, rotation and zooming capabilities where they're using the F4 command, the shift and mouse wheel, or the 3D connection devices. Just the fact that when we're rotating these large assemblies around, nothing is disappearing in the background. Everything is refreshing faster. The components are there, um, so forth there. So if we come over and we'll take this one over to a drawing. And as I start a drawing file here, so I can use an A size sheet format or my, I've got a custom one here that I've got with my four views and I've got these turned on to shaded. Or if I wanna use the default uh, format here, that's got my five views. Um, with a note here. So we'll just select create and what file are we going to use? We can use the assembly file we have open or I can go out and grab a different file and I'll just grab a part file here and select OK. And then there are my five views. And so very quickly I've got a generic note at the top. I've got my views created here. I can adjust my uh, text for my view labels. I can start dimensioning. Uh, I do have my measure command now so I can come in here and say well all right so that one is 1.378 diameter between the two is 1.373 inches so without having to put dimensions on this file to see what those dimensions are I can just start measuring so measure between those two faces right there uh, if I want to know the thickness here without having to add dimensions in the past uh, or as we have had to do this in the past we can just use the measure command now now I will come over and start the dimension command and so if I start this dimension here, as I move over so far, I can't keep this aligned dimension going. Um, it wants to go to linear. So I can right click, select dimension type and rotate it. And then I can pick a reference that I want it to align with and then it will hold true to that. So no matter where I move it now, it's going to maintain that reference so I can place that dimension. Uh, as I pick a round object now, the diameter is automatically thrown there. As I pick this one, I'm still getting my radius here. So as I'm moving these around very easily, I want to grab this one here. I want it to come out this. I start losing it. Right click, dimension type, rotate it, select my reference, and then I can place that as I go there. So very nice addition to the 2021 drawing environment there, being able to allow, align my perpendicular dimensions uh, without a lot of fuss. So the sheet formats uh, are stored in the drawing resources uh, folder here inside the drawing itself and your sheet formats. So you can come in and create your own. Um, you can start a new sheet off of any of these and select the file you want. But if you start, if you create your own, save it in your template, update your template when you start the new file uh, and select your DWG, the sheet formats will be listed there for you. All right, let's start a new assembly here. And we'll go bring in a platform. We'll take a look at some of the frame generator uh, UIs that or the commands that have moved over to the new UI panels. So we'll save this, give it a name. On the design tab, again, these little orange nodes here. Uh, as you hover over one, if there is something that has been updated. It's going to say updated in the upper right hand corner of the uh, preview there. So I'll start the insert command. Again, I can set up presets. So I've got my favorites here. Uh, is this square tube, rectangular tube, we're working with channels, angles, uh, or all? Uh, and then what kind of standard are we working with? What different shape are we working with here? So I'm gonna go ahead and filter this down to square tubes. And we'll go with the square tube, and we'll make this one out of four by four by eight here. Now, traditionally, in the old dialog box, I would have an orientation uh, area right here that I could select and tell it how I wanted this to align. So I'm just gonna pick one of these edges here and then I can zoom in and I see all these little nodes that I can select. So I can rotate this around and I can pick any one of these corners here. So I can move this over, I can move this one, I can put it on the center line, or I can move it back to the inside right there. Anyway, 
If I wanted to offset this, I can just grab the manipulator there and offset it, and it starts adjusting the dimension here inside the dialog. Or I can move that back to zero, or I can type in zero. So in the olden days, a positive or a negative number based off the edge of the line you selected, if you entered in one, it would go one way or the other. But now I can just use those feature manipulators and adjust that as to where I want that to go, or it remembers the five most previous used values there. If I needed to rotate this, I can rotate this around right here just by grabbing the manipulator, or I can type in the angle that I want it to be right there. And then as I start selecting the other uh, components here, it remembers the matching format there. So I can come back and say, you know what, I want to go ahead and put my four vertical members in here as well and select OK. I have not done anything with my file naming defaults, so it's going to use the out of the box default state uh, as it creates these files for me. Then I can add those and create those right there, and I will hide my component here. Now, inside uh, the frame generator environment, more and more of these commands as they move over. Uh, the MITRE command that was moved in 20, in, with Inventor 2020 supports multiple corners at one time. So if I just select these four members, it's going to start MITRE-ing those four corners for me. I didn't have to select this corner and hit apply, this corner and hit apply, and this corner. So I didn't have to hit apply four times there. Uh, I can just select those four members and it will MITRE those four corners for me at one time. The software is getting smarter, more intelligent, fewer clicks that I have to select there. And then my trim and extend, uh, move to the new panel UI. So I can rotate this over and say I want to move this trim against the bottom here and then select my four members. I get a preview there very quickly, show me what I'm what I'm going to look like just to make sure. Select OK. And then now I've trimmed this shape up so far. And we're good to go there. Now, the inside the application options on the file tab, the file naming defaults, if I go to the frame generator side, I'm just using the defaults here. File name is going to give it a name that I uh, apply. I can change it as I'm saving it. Uh, if I want to add something to it, a uh, project name. So it's going to pull from the project file or the uh, project property inside the Inventor I properties. And so I can take out the uh, file name there. Uh, I can reset this. Maybe I want to put the project name on this side, file name, and then project name. If I want to put a space and a dash in there, I can do that. So I'm kind of getting a preview of what it's going to look like right there. Uh, the frame itself, for editing purposes, is going to be created as a subassembly. I can adjust that one as well. If I don't like it, come back. It reset and it resets to the out of the box state. Uh, the same thing with the tube and pipe. Come in here to the tube and pipe side. All right, so all of my assembly routes I'm going to create uh, assembly name, the route with an index number, but I also want to tie it to a project. So I can give it my project name. And if I want to come in here and put a space in there. Or if I want to, uh, instead of the, the route, maybe I want it to say routes plural. I can adjust that, uh, whatever I would like to put in there, and then that's what it's going to show me right here. So I can put a space in here, depending on how I want this to display out, hit OK. The next time I go create a new tube and pipe route, it's going to adhere to this new naming scheme. On the Colors tab, this is where we would enable the dark theme if we wanted to bring this in. So we can hit the dark theme. Uh, details takes you out to the white paper uh, page for Autodesk. Continue uh, or apply, and then we'll go out in the background and it will reset everything and give it that dark theme uh, that we're working with there. So we'll update that. Usually takes about 10 seconds for it to apply all of that, and uh, it'll refresh here. There it comes up, and hopefully go to webinars not too. There we come, and so it's starting to replace everything here in the background as it goes through. Um, I can switch back over. A lot of the dialog boxes, like the application options, will stay with that light theme as they're going. Um, 
I've got multiple files open here, so it's updating each one as it's going in the background there. So it's taking a little bit longer than normal. There we go. Um, so the application option stays with the lighter theme, but now the interface is back here. It's not black. Uh, it's that dark, dark blue uh, view here. All of the, the text has changed, so it's easily accessible and read against that darker background. The environments are there. Um, you can adjust this. You can change the reflection uh, type that you want. You can adjust your highlighting. Uh, you can customize schemes here. You can go in and customize uh, ever how this looks, what you want it to look like. If you want to change the way your sketch dimensions look, how they are when they're uh, constrained, when they're not constrained. Uh, if you don't like the purple uh, aspect, you can change that to orange or green or whatever color you would like. Just pick on any one of those and it will apply right there. And uh, the next time you start a sketch, you would notice that change there. All right, so let's toggle over here and see if we have any questions. Yeah, I'm I'm coming back in here, Mark. Um, most of the questions, believe it or not, we had some users that had some uh, some issues with the connection itself. I didn't see any notes in the meeting, so. I think that was probably a regional issue. Okay. Um, Angela did ask a really neat question. She asked, "Can the uh, can the presets be exchanged between users when the uh, within the office so they all match?" And I answered saying, "Yes, we can do this through the application options on the file tab." I forgot to say that we can also set this in the project file. Can you uh, can you show those two options? Yes, I can. So in the Application options, uh, if you, after you've got some presets set up, if you come in here and export, just give them a unique name, uh, put it on a network share, someone else could import those and those are in there. Um, it's same with you, if you have any keyboard shortcuts or if you've customized the right click menu, uh, I have the joint command in my right click menu instead of the free move. And so if you wanted to share those out, you could go into the customize here when this loads and export the customization settings and another user could import those as well so everyone's using the same thing and let me close my open files here and we won't save those and make everybody watch that so we will come over here to the projects tab and in our, let's see here, folder options. So here is where the presets are. And so by default, they are in the local machine. I'll click on that there. There we go. So it's on the local machine and the user, there's an app data folder. Uh, and all of this is stored based off the inventor release you're working with. But you can point that to a network share. Um, P drive, N drive, uh, Z drive, Y drive, whatever it is, you can point that to a network share, especially if you're in a vaulted environment. One person can edit the project file and everyone else just needs to do a get to refresh it. But yes, you can save those so that everyone can share those, absolutely. Very good. And I'm really not seeing any other uh, other connections. We did have a a user in Huntsville saying he's not having any issues. And I know uh, Mark's, in, uh, Mark's in Atlanta and I'm outside of Nashville. And, and I apologize if you guys were having issues there. Uh, I hope it wasn't on my end, but if it was, I sincerely apologize. I don't think it was, Mark. I didn't have, uh, okay. I didn't hear you any issues at all. Um, any changes to the reflection environment types or the default, Carl had asked. So, Depending on the theme that you are working with, uh, uh, yes and no. Uh, how about that? Uh, so if you're using the dark theme, it's going to default to the Studio O2, uh, which is a newer uh, DDS reflection file. If you have your own uh, DDS files uh, or reflection type files, you can uh, add those to the textures uh, folder here. And you can, so you can add your own if you don't like any of the defaults. So there is a change in that depending on the environment, it automatically updates for you, but you can add your own there as well. Very good. And then Angela has asked another uh, another question. Uh, can the feature for new drawing creation with default views also set default dimensions? 
So I kind of cross it. I think there, Mark, you can you can kind of show that um, with the difference between default settings in the uh, in the style library versus the default views in the the drawing itself. So when you, yep, good one. Let me go in here to the drawing. So when you are or whatever template you're using is tied to a dimension style from the styles editor. Uh, so inside the styles editor, and it also goes back to the project file, whether it's read, uh, write, or read only. Um, so there are different styles. So I've got it set to local. I'll go to all styles. Um, so underneath the standard, these are the default standards that are out of the box. And so you can copy these. You can edit these as you need be. If you don't want to keep a generic out of the box, you can edit those. But I like to use the default standard fabrication one. And the reason I like to use that one is on the scale side, it already has all the architectural scales built in. Now, I can copy those, I can add to those, but depending on the one that I save as active in my drawing is the one that it's going to default to. So if I wanted to set up a template that had the standard millimeter dimensions, I could save a template with that, with my preset views or my uh, sheet views. And I could also save one as the default standard here that's utilizing my default sets so that when I use that template, it's gonna use my inches. If I use a different template, it's gonna use the millimeters. So yes, you can adhere to that. The drawing itself is going to be based off what the standard is telling it to do based off the saved uh, settings from the styles library. Very good. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, and Les mentions that uh, that network share info has been, been real valuable for content center info. Um, nothing has really changed there. He said, not sure if anything has changed, but I found that when other users have inserted uh, nuts and bolts, their drawings blow up with no content on it because it, right, because it uh, doesn't, uh, it saves in the default location. That is, that is very correct, Les. Um, if you set it to a network location, if you're using Vault, that usually doesn't become a problem, but if you're setting it Correct. to, um, if you do set that to a network location, you got a small group of users, something like that, that does help out. Uh, let's see. Um, the reflection environment can be tied, or can the reflection environment be tied to application options or the project. It's specifically tied to the application options, yes. if I'm not mistaken. And that, that is correct. That's changed by user, you know, or like Mark has already shown, if you want to set it and then export those options, um, it can be taken out. And Carl also, um, yes, it is exported with those application options. Um, if you if you do an export and you have that already set, then then that setting will go with it. That's absolutely true. All right. Some folks in Missouri didn't have any issues with the web. That's good. Um, I think we got, uh, and yeah, we talked about less in Huntsville. So definitely sorry for the, uh, for the issues you got. I think that's kind of a national thing right now. Just uh, some folks having problems and everyone working home. from home. Everybody's working from home. I got uh, my wife's downstairs, and my son is, if he's awake, is probably playing Xbox. <laughs> do understand? So, uh, we do have some upcoming classes. Uh, if we have any interest in new user or the Inventor Advanced Part Modeling classes, we do have some of those e trainings coming up. Uh, the new user, we have three on the books right now one in May, June, and July and the inventor advanced part we have coming up in a couple of weeks on May 18th and 19th. Uh, these are all via Zoom, uh, so they will all be on, online. Uh, only the new user class uh, on May 27th through 29th is in the Eastern time zone. The other three shown there are in the Central time zone. Very good. And I think I'm teaching a few of those. Wonderful. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in, Miss Ashley, so I think we can wrap this up. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, 
I will let people know that you, if you think of additional questions later, you can simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email you received from GoToWebinar and we can get those to um, your sales rep or whoever to get your questions answered. Once again, if you could take a few moments to fill out the short survey, we would appreciate it. Um, and thanks for attending the webinar. Have a great day, everybody.